The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the December 2nd, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today, you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past one o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you so feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, well, just like uh, David, Craig, and Tim have done, you can always send me an email. Send it to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers Den. Well, any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger. Financial News Network, I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Most of the indices trade to the upside. The only one that is not is the semis are off five. So basically, that is a flat market. If we take a look at the Dow up 618, S&P 64, NASDAQ 105, Russell's up 43, Trendy's up 454, gold's off $21, trading at 1762. Silver is up, but it's off a penny. It's uh, flat. Lights we crude is up 38 cents, trading at 6596. The big mover dollar-wise to the upside is booking holdings up 90 bucks that's over four percent google's up 43 one and a half percent snowflake 37 12 percent charter communications 36 nearly six percent svb financial 32 bucks about five percent to the downside lamb research off 27 bucks four percent novavax 23 dollars 12 percent micro strategy 22 bucks three percent elastic nv and it's chesting its elasticity it's down 16 percent 21 buck roonies and viva systems off 16 that is 6%. So plenty to look at. Of course, what you want to look, I want to look at what you want to look at. We do have some requests that are in here. Let's take a quick tour around the markets, see what they're doing, equity markets, that is. Take a look at the equity future contracts out here. So what do we have? We begin by taking, well, let's do this. It's an easier view for you. So that would be this view. There we go. So here are the uh, week, this is the weekly time frame charts that we're looking at. You got the ES in the upper left, I'm sorry, the upper right, the NQ's in the upper left, the Dow's in the lower left, and the Russell is in the lower right. What I want you to take notice of, well, first of all, the question is, do we have a change in trend? And the answer is absolutely not. Now, I answer that question by utilizing the bottom of our weekly TAS market profiles. And so I just have you focus on the uh, very right-hand panel. It's the ES Mini. If we go back to the February, March of 2020 timeframe, and right here where my cursor is at, this is the uh, week that began February 24, 2020. What do we have take place then? We had, a, we had price close below the bottom of its weekly profile. And obviously, as you know, it bottomed out here. And then as we see price overtake, this is coming off of the lows from uh, March of 2020 out here. As price gets over, price come back, comes back and tests what? The bottom of that weekly profile. Continues moving higher, we get a retracement where? Right in the bottom of that weekly profile. If you're wondering where the buy the dipsters are, they truly, or the professional ones, are sitting right here at the bottom of these weekly profiles. And what do we have? We had a brand new weekly profile. I believe that is forming, that was last week that it formed. 4504 is the number you've heard me talking about. The low so far this week has been 4497. That level is held. Now, it's only Thursday. If we do see a close below 4504 tomorrow, and that's a possibility, then that'd be telling us about a change in trend. But here what we had was we had really three of the four indices, in essence, test the weekly 
weekly break uh, the weekly TAS market profile level. The Russell, if you just go all the way down to the bottom on the right, the bottom of that weekly profile, 21.44. The uh, low was 21.36. That was yesterday. The Dow hasn't gotten all the way down there, but close enough for my workout here. So you've got three of the four that have held. So we do not have a change in trend, but still write these numbers down in your pad of paper. 33,689 in the Dow, Dow Equity Future Contract that is 2144 in the Russell. 4504 inside the ES mini. Now the NQ is way away from the bottom of that weekly profile. That's down all the way at the 14802 level. That doesn't mean that the NQ isn't going lower out there. And when I say isn't going lower, there's a level that we really want to pay attention to. And that level, I'm just going to expand out the chart, is the center of its weekly profile. In fact, let me just turn off the A to B equals CD pattern right now. Just there we go. So now it's a little bit clear. Let me get rid of the retracement levels. Now, the retracement that the NQ has done from low to high off this last run, only a 0 0.382 retracement. If this is a bottom, it's talking about a very strong move to the upside. I am not saying that. I'm saying if this is a bottom, really strong move then to the upside with only a 0 0.382 retracement. Here's what I am saying, though, and this is what's really important. Or I believe this is what is important for us to watch in the NQ. That is the center of its bearish, a bullish structured daily profile. So when you close below the bottom of a bullish structured daily profile, and there needs to be two consecutive closes, so price must close below that today, that's at 16.055. If in fact it does, and we're trading right now at 15.977, then what we have here is a, at least a short-term change in trend, not on the weekly basis, but on the daily time frame. What that also tells us, this would really uh, be about tomorrow's action, Sunday's action, Monday's action. By the way, tomorrow I'm going to go ahead and record the show from 8 to 9, so please join me live. Uh, if you do have some questions, send them out early tomorrow. Don't send them out today or, or tonight. I won't be able to really keep track of them. But do send them out in the morning. I'll be happy to look at it. But, but join me live if you will. But the real key level to be watching inside the NQ is 16.134. When you close below the bottom of a bullish structured profile, if it's just a counter trend move, price is going to find resistance in the sell zone. Where's the sell zone? It'd be between the bottom and the center. So 16.055 to 16.134. Those would be the levels to look at. Now, yesterday there was a new profile that was attempting to form inside the Russell 2000. It did not take hold last night. So no new daily profiles there. I'll share with you momentarily where price is likely to go to as soon as we get off of this screen. What we do have that is forming out here is a new bearish structured daily profile in the Dow Equity Future Contract. But just like yesterday for the Russell, we're using Stevie's advanced Doppler tool. So this may not take hold. We use the data. The data is accurate with regard to where our buyers sitting, where our sellers sitting. Buyers are sitting at 34 322. Where are sellers sitting? Between the zone, and that's a large zone, 35505 to 35900. So it's possible that what the NQ is, or so what the Dow is going to do is bounce all the way up into that 35505 level. No new profiles inside the ES mini. So where is it that price is likely headed to? Well, First, let's go take a look at my white background charts. Give me just a moment here to switch over to that. And what you will see in the, is the ES mini. Now, the ES mini, the upper left-hand side, so yesterday closes below another key level of support, the breakout area, 45, 43.75. Well, mark that down in your pad of paper as well. Close below that today, says we're headed lower. Now, headed lower would actually be potentially a bullish thing. What do you mean by that, Steve Arino? What I mean is that yesterday was bar number seven. Today is going to or may become bar number eight. It depends on where it closes. If, in fact, the ES mini closes above 4579, and we're at 4582, you can forget this TD9 count. It will evaporate. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back to finish this off. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So uh, we're taking a look at the ES Mini. It all depends upon its close today. Uh, the close must be below the close of bar number four that I've got on my screen. If it doesn't do that, then the TD9 count goes away. If it does close below that, then what we'd really be looking for here is a spike below bar number seven. This is in the futures contract. A spike below the level of 44.9775. Uh, that would be need to be done either tomorrow or Sunday, Monday out there, and that would set up a TD9 count inside the ES Mini. The NQ, we took a look at that earlier. It's got an A to B equals CD to downside. It hasn't completed that, but as long as price remains below the bottom of its uh, daily profile, that bullish structured profile, that is a likely outcome. Now, its price target may be the breakout level of 15507. Inside the Dow and the Russell 2000, they already have their bottoms. Not that they can't go lower out here. Of course, they can do that. But they already have their TD9 count bottoms. Both of those were formed on the bar following bar number nine. So as long as those lows hold out there, then they have a bottom. So we've got two of the four have bottoms. The two weakest instruments have bottoms in here. And uh, so now it's just a matter of the ES and the NQ um, that you need to wait for to make their bottom out here. And as long as price doesn't close below those weekly profile levels out there, there still is the possibility of a further rally. Now, do we take out the all-time highs at this stage? That I don't know. I don't think so. But uh, so where is it that price is targeting? The oscillator on change line. So in the case of the ES Mini, so maybe the ES Mini doesn't head lower and form a TD9 count. Doesn't have to do that. But where is it targeting? Likely, on a rally, the oscillator and change line, which happens to be the bottom of its daily profile at the moment. Inside the uh, NQ, we've really already taken care of that. If price did close above 16,134, then 16,354 would be the number. That would also be the area to perhaps sell. Why? Because take a look at how price has held that oscillator and change line the entire week out here. The Dow, you can see that its oscillator and change line changed colors yesterday. 
That tells us that price and that line should catch up to each other. So the price target level is about 35,240. The Russell 2000 did the same thing, only its oscillator and change line turned colors one or two days earlier. That becomes its price target as well, 2283. So the Russell and the Dow have got a very clear picture. The ES Mini and the NQ, not as good. At least the Dow and the Russell 2000 say, hey, Steve, I've got my bottom. I want to at least make a rally. It could just be a counter trend rally. I want to go tag those oscillator and change lines. Now, if price gets up there, tests and rejects a red oscillator and change line that says we head back lower now head back lower could just be retracement of that move higher could be all the way back down to the bottom it could take out those bottoms out there but that's the areas that would be we would be watching now that's on the daily time frame if we take a quick peek at what's going on in just the short term time frame the 30 minute charts out here what we will see is a couple of td9 counts that could form uh in the es the nq i'm sorry the es the russell 2000 and the dow they're working right now on bar number eight, but so far it's bar number seven of the count that is the high. So that says bar number eight is going to complete at 130. That says between 130 and 230, if price can spike above the current high for those three instruments, then that will likely, well, at this stage here, I'm just looking at it. Uh, it's bar number eight. Yeah, it's it's what that would signal to us is that we should then see TD9 count tops. And that's when the selling could come in. So what this is communicating to us is that that wouldn't take place likely until between 2 and 2.30, right in time for the uh, polar plunge out there. It may not form TD9 counts, but that's those are the patterns to be looking at uh, on the uh, short-term time frame charts. Um, anything else that I can share with you here? No, nothing that I see. So let's do this. Uh, let's go get into the questions so that, um, let me get back to this black background screen here so that we don't get too far behind on those. So there were just three in here. Maybe there's more now. But right now, let's go to the first question. This one coming from Tim. And Tim says, I'm long Old Dominion freight line. So let's get to our three panel chart out here. Let's go ahead and uh, punch in the symbol for Old Dominion, O-D-F-L. Oh, it was already up on my screen. See, I was preparing for that. How about that? Uh, what I didn't do is get to my other chart. So Quint, Tim's question is, you're long from 304. It's trading at 356. Is it time to protect profits or does it have good support level from here? Excellent question. Absolutely has a good support level. That support level is at the bottom of its daily profile. Price this morning, this is ODFL, got down to a low of 191.23. Shouldn't have freaked anybody out because the bottom of its, I'm sorry, <laughs> incorrect number got down to a low of 346 even steven that is still above the bottom of its daily profile which is 345 so yeah you've got good support here if price did close below 345 then you'd be looking to move back to 331 it'd still be in a profit position out here now let's go take a look at old dominion freight lines and see what other signals we have on the daily time frame the signal that we have is a roads momentum indicator top and so all that has led to is a consolidation. You asked, is it a good time to take profits or does it have good support? It has good support at 345.24. If you did see two consecutive closes below that, what well, the signal would be here, Tim, or the, the message would be that price is likely to go target the 305 level. That is this TD9 breakout area. That is courtesy of the daily time frame chart. The weekly chart out here says, hey, I don't know what you guys are talking about. You screaming memes out here. As long as I hold my green oscillator and change line, things are hunky dory. Now, there is bar number eight that is forming this week so you could have a td9 count top that forms between this week and the next two but at tim as long as price holds the oscillator and change line that is on the weekly basis that is currently printed at 345.32 there's really no reason to exit or jettison your position not that i see and on a uh, monthly basis this says it wants to keep moving higher this negated its td9 count it did it last month the month of uh, uh november out there it don't you know i'll eventually get my my months correct um so no i don't see a reason for you to jettison the position but you know use a protective stop or certainly watch that 345 24 level so hope that helps you out tim thanks so much for writing in and have a terrific thursday the next question coming in from craig and this is uh let's see craig says craig e greetings back at you Steve, I uh, was hoping you might cover Apple and or Riot from a three to four week perspective. Sure. So let's go take a look at both of them. So we take a look at Apple. AAPL is the ticker symbol. What do we see? We see that price is still trading within. Oh, it's above the top of its daily profile. So gaps down this morning. Gaps down this morning, I guess, on some news that they're having some supply issues. Who isn't having supply issues? Okay. 
Uh, but that didn't seem to really uh, 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 do too much to Apple because price is back above its daily profile, 162.43. Uh, you're above the weekly. The weekly's got the larger A to B equals CD to the upside. That's a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside. The small A to B equals CD pattern gets you to 179.32. No way is that where price would stop on its move up. It, it should head to at least the 190.49 area. But that's bigger picture, longer term. You were asking about three to four weeks out here. So with regard to the three to four weeks, all that I can do is provide you with the areas where buyers and sellers reside right now. And in the case of Apple, the sellers are at 162.43 and they're losing the battle. As long as price remains above that, price should continue higher. To the downside with regard to Apple, what you'd be looking for is 154.25. That is the bottom of its daily profile. Price closed below that, that could spell some trouble. As we take a look at our white background charts out here for Apple on a daily time frame, we don't have any kind of a, I take that back. Apple still has its sell the D point pattern. Price has not been able to close above the shooting star from November 22nd. So actually, 165.70 is the price that Apple must close above in order to truly get back to its bullish ways. Steve Roach with TFNN. We'll be right back. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. Again, tomorrow morning, 8 to 9, we'll be recording the show, be, being replayed at the normal time slot, 1 to 2. So please join me live. Back to Craig's question. Guys. I don't think I really answered it. He was asking about, hey, what's Apple going to do for the next uh, three to four weeks out here? We're just simply, so we, we did identify in that daily time frame as the top is still in place out there. So I gave you the level that price would need to close above to negate that. As long as that is in place, you know that's your resistance area. On a daily time frame here, I've got my 30-minute time frame charts up. And this takes us back just to the middle of November. Let me see if I pull it back even further. I can pull it back further. Yeah. So this takes us back to October the, what are we at? October the 13th. And what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at the red horizontal lines. Those are the TD9 break out levels and we can see that none of these breakout levels have failed on a pullback and that includes yesterday if we take a look at the pullback so this gets to wave number seven that's letter g that's courtesy of basil chapman and saratoga bob uh, an old denner of ours so it gets to wave number seven that can be a top in this case here it most certainly was what does price do pulls all the way back to its breakout level 158.79 forms a td9 count that has gotten the bounce going now where is price targeting that's right the oscillator and change line 164.27 so those of you that are short Short the uh, NQ out here. You certainly want to watch Apple because if price gets above 164.28, it'll certainly influence the NQ out here. But what the NQ would then, or what the Apple would be, what Apple would be saying is it may want to go run all the way back up to the high from yesterday, up in that 170.30 level. That's not the message yet. That is not the message now, but if price did close above that green oscillator and change line, that would be its message. So really what I want to get back to you with, Craig, is if price closes below a TD9 count break out area and the one that is in place right now is at 158.79 there may be a new one that forms out there that might be your early signal of price moving lower again over that uh, two to three week time period out there so hope that helps you out thanks so much for writing in let's go to the next question that came in this one is from david h david wants to take a look at tesla so give me a moment here let's get back to the uh, charts t s t s l a and david's question is hey steve let's try this again Hmm. I know you don't like doing ultra short term charting calls, but after watching Tesla bottom at 1056 and get back to flat, should this thing go above 1100 uh, by tomorrow? You've got the 1090 calls out there. So let's take a look at Tesla. What is Tesla doing? Tesla is consolidating with inside its daily profile out there. What took place yesterday? Is that what you were talking? You said uh, got up to bottom so the bottom is just really you know i don't really have much of a bottom signal other than price being at the center of its daily profile the center in this case here is really at the center both buyers and sellers believe that tesla is fairly valued at 1065.96 every time price gets back to that level it holds so if you're asking me by tomorrow does this get to uh, 1100 dollars? i don't uh well you're saying to 1100 to go much above 1100 yeah i mean yeah but it, it certainly it can. Uh, let's just look at a short-term time frame chart for Tesla here and try to. Uh, I don't have the short term. Give me a moment. We got to get to a different set of charts. Um, let's do it on. I've got a 10 and 30 somewhere. Here we go. So TSLA. So let me get this fired up. We'll bring this uh, chart over here shortly. Try to assist David with this question. And the only way we're going to do that is look at short-term time frames. So we're going to go look at the 30-minute chart. What does a 30-minute chart show us? The 30-minute chart shows that uh, price has held support. Support was 1062. And as long as price holds support, then yeah, it can move higher. But as I look at this 30-minute chart here, David, notice how that oscillator and change line has turned red earlier in the day. Price has basically gotten up to that, and uh, and it's deflected it. Uh, it's just pulled back into support right now, which is at 1073.07. But a close above 1062 is going to say the answer to your question is not likely, not likely to get back to 1100. As long as price holds 1062, then it can. The top of this 30 minute profile is 1122 out there. But right now, things don't look great for Tesla. We take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart. As I look at a 10 minute time frame chart, what do I have out here? Really not much. And so we're not going to spend any time there. So that is the best that I can do, uh, David. And um, I hope that that helps you out. And thanks again so much for writing in. The next question coming from Marty. Marty wants to take a look at, uh, so Marty says, give me a moment here. Steve, what do the charts tell you the gold stock 
goal row is go is going long and short term. So G O R O G O R O. Let's get that up on our screen out here. Let's get G O R O on my white background charts. Okay, so go row from a profile standpoint, Marty, is below the daily and is inside the uh, bullish structured area of its weekly profile. Now, it's hard to make that out. So I'm going to come back to the weekly chart here momentarily. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn price off just simply so that everybody can see it. Why is this thing taking so long? Hmm. It is. Okay, so here you can see this is a brand new profile. So this is bullish in structure because the center is closer to the bottom. 162 is the bottom, 177 is the center, two is at the uh, top. But that's on the weekly time frame. So we put our price back up here. Price is below the center, but it's inside this bullish structured area between 162 and 177. So it's in an area of support. And our real question, Marty, is, hey, what's going on on that daily waterfall? Did it form a TD9 count? That's really the question. So let's go find out. Let's pull over GORO, which is Gold Resource Corporation. And uh, how did I lose that? Okay, I did. No problem. So let's expand this out here. And voila. Today is the bar following bar number nine on a TD9 count. Your question is what do the charts tell us about uh, GORO? If GORO holds whatever today's low is, when I say hold, it can spike below it, but it can't close below it. If it closes below today's low, that says price heads to 166, maybe 155. But today should be or could be a bottom inside of GORO. On a weekly chart out here, let's go see what this is doing. Price is trading inside a weekly profile. We, I guess we really talked about that. So this looks okay. On a monthly time frame, I don't really have much out here. You certainly want to see this get back above its oscillator and change line. If we take a look at, so GORO has been below its oscillator unchanged line, the red oscillator and change line, since September of 2020 for over a year. So the oscillator and change line here, Marty, is at 194. I think that's all that you really need to know. If GORO can close above it on the 194 area, that's the current print, if it can close above that on a monthly basis, that's going to tell you about a, a change in trend, even without a bottoming signal here. So back to the daily time frame, you've got a TD9 count bottom, but if you see price close below today's low, whatever that ends up being, that tells you that this should continue to head lower. So I hope that helps you out. Thanks so much for writing in and have a terrific Thursday. Let's see, do we have other questions? We do. They are lining up. Let me do this here. I've got to get rid of all the junk. And uh, so I do that pretty quickly. And that's why I ask you to try to write radio show question in there because it just makes it much easier for me. You have no idea, or maybe you do, the amount of junk email that I get. And it happens during the show, obviously. I mean, it never stops. The next question is coming in from Hector and the fuel injector. But of course, we don't want just a blue screen of somebody running. We want to go ahead and take a look at some actual charts. So Hector writes in, hey, we're going to go to a break. So I'll spare you what Hector said until we get back from this breakout here. Right now, we've got the Dow trading up uh, 630, 625 points, S&P 66, NASDAQ 100, 101. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So Hector is uh, wanting to, is inquiring about the SMHs out here. So the semiconductors and, ah, geez, I can't believe that it deleted it. But let's put this out here. And he's looking at the, uh, he, Hector and Patty, they love the A to B equals CD pattern. So the A point out here is March 16, 2020. The B point is going to be the high from the week that began February 15, 2021. The C point is the low from March 8th of 2021. So you can see, and this is a confirmed A to B equals CD to upside. The swing point here from uh, February of uh, 2021 at volume of 14 million shares, and it was passed with 18 million shares the week of August 23rd. So the one to one level gets us to 378.73. So yes, you're licking your chops. It is a confirmed A to B equals CD to the upside, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have a few pit stops along the way. And right now, what we have on a daily time frame is price consolidating with inside its daily bullish structured profile. This morning was a test of that support level, Hector, and that's at 299.39. You most certainly want to watch that. But right now, all that you have is just a sideways consolidation with inside the profile. The question is, in the semiconductor index, on the SMHs, does it have a topping signal? And the answer is, it most certainly does. It has a road momentum indicator top. That's your big old bearish engulfing candle. So that is your resistance level. That resistance level is 318.82. That is where price must close above in order for the SMHs to get back on their merry way for your large A to B equals city to the upside on the weekly time frame. If price closes below the bottom of that bullish structure daily profile, 299.39, that tells you it's going to be a while before it does that because that would be signaling to us an A to B equals CD to the downside or a price target of its breakout level to 270.03. So just be careful here. I mean, you're not adding to the position. I mean, you could, I understand it, but you've got the topping signal and price pulling back to support. So you're really in neutral territory. And the question is, do you do re really do anything when price is in neutral territory? And that's a personal decision. So Hector, it's up up to you. So the question is, uh, you know, confirm the A to B equals CD. Yeah, I think we've got that. Um, so I hope that that helps you out. And as always, thanks so much for writing in. Uh, we've got uh, Brent in Martinez, California. Steve, could you please go over gold and silver contracts? I know you mentioned yesterday the potential for a bottoming pattern with the TD9 counts. Have a great day and weekend. You too, Brent. Uh, always nice to hear from you. So let's go do that. We're going to do that by just switching screens here momentarily. So let me get this fired up. We'll do both at the same time, and that is take a look at gold and silver. So let me get those charts up here. I think I have them. Oh, I don't. 
well, I'm going to try this and hope that it uh, populates here pretty quickly. If it doesn't, Stevie goes to plan B. Okay, looks like we can use uh, plan A. So plan A says we're going to take like gold and silver together. Now, gold is in the left-hand side. You will see that the low prior to today was bar number eight of a TD nine count. This is the bar following bar number nine. That still qualifies for a TD nine count bottom. So Brent, whatever today's low is, the current low inside of gold, we're looking at the February contract, the current low out here, well, why doesn't it want to work? Okay, it doesn't work. I'm gonna go look at a different chart. I'm not gonna change screens, but give me a moment to do that. So the low inside of gold so far today is 1762.20. Now, Brent, I don't know if that's going to be the low today or not. Let's just use that. If it is the low, as long as price doesn't close below that, you have a valid TD nine count. In the case of silver, it made its low yesterday, and that was the bar following bar number one. So it looks like they both want to do the same thing. What well, we can see in the case of silver, Brent, on a daily basis, the oscillator and change line changed colors about four bars ago. That suggests that we should see price at least make its way up to that. That is at the 2352 level. I would imagine gold will do the same thing. That's at the 1806 area. If, on the other hand, we see both gold and silver close below the low of these patterns out here, that's telling us about a further move lower. So, Brent, I hope that helps you out with regard to the TD9 counts for the daily time frame for both gold and silver. They are signaling to us that there should be a bottom in these uh, in in, um, in in those precious metals basically uh, today. Uh, so I hope that helps you out. The next question coming in from a David in Tom Ball, Texas. David wants to take a look at light sweet crude. So to do that, we're going to change screens again. Hey, this is pretty cool. Bill has, Mr. Bill has not had to bop me upside the head with a two by four yet. Of course, the day's not over. There's still about 13 minutes to go here, but doing a pretty decent job of changing screens. Now we're gonna go change screens here. We're gonna go take a look at light sweet crew, but we're gonna do this here using our four panel chart as soon as Stevie can find it. Here we go. So the four panel chart, daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly, as I know the day is young. Uh, what we can see here is that light sweet crew. So your question is, please take a look at crude oil and Exxon Mobil. Where are the buyers and sellers hanging out in ExxonMobil? Well, with regard to Light Sweet Crude, I think they've shown their cards so far. And that's at the bottom of that rising trend line. That's the upper right-hand panel out here. Uh, so a level of support has held. If this is just a counter trend move to the downside, if we look at the monthly time frame chart, uh, David, what you're going to see is that price was able to close above for two consecutive bars, the top of its bearish structured monthly profile. Price is pulled back to where? To where a counter trend move to the downside should end. And that's at 62.63. That is the center of that monthly profile. The actual low is 62.43. Doesn't matter to me that it got below. No, 62.63 is holding. So right now, Light Sweet Crude is saying, hey, I may want to form a bottom. Now, what Stevie needs to also do here is, because I don't recall if there is, where can I do this? I can do this. I think I can do this. I'm just going to go to the daily chart. So we've got light sweet crude. We've got uh, February 22. Give me a moment to pull this up. Is it February or is it January? What are we trading here? We're still trading January. Uh, yeah, we're still trading January. Give me a moment here. CL22. But I was just looking for to see if there's any kind of a bottom signal now. There's not, so I'm not going to pull it over. So I don't have a I don't have a bottoming pattern other than price just pulling back to support. So your second question, but it does look like it has held a real key level out there. So let's go take a look at Exxon Mobil, try to get a feel for what it's communicating to us. Ticker symbol here is XOM, and uh, with regard to its profiles, David, price below the daily, price has found support at the top of the weekly. So old resistance, perhaps new support, 59.80. If this is new support, where's price going to bounce to an Exxon Mobil? 64.92. Isn't it cool? We could just, just like that, Steve, all you can give out the numbers. All I'm doing is narrating the charts using the TAS market profiles. Let's see if we've got any other information out here to help us on Exxon Mobil. As we take a look at its daily time frame chart, what we can see is what? 
Um, you can see an A to B equals C D to the downside. That most certainly is being confirmed as we speak right now because it's a bullish engulfing candle. That would suggest to you and I, David, that uh, ExxonMobil should go target the 6246 level. That's the oscillator and change line. You say, where are buyers and sellers hanging out? Well, because it's got a confirmed A to B equals CD, the buyers are hanging out right here. So really along the lines with regard to Lightspeed Crude testing that rising trend line, on a weekly basis with regard to ExxonMobil, is there any damage out here? No, there's not. Price holding the top of that uh, profile. It does have a TD9 and Rosemont indicator top. So it does tell us if we do see a close below 5980 in Exxon Mobil, David, you should expect price to get back to about the 5296 level. But at this stage here, it looks like it at least wants to bounce. And that level should be between about 6246 to 6285. XOM is the ticker symbol. Steve Rhodes with TFNN will be back to finish out this show in about three minutes. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back 
folks. So it's green across the board now. Even the semis have uh, turned slightly positive. They're up uh, two points out here. Uh, so to finish out the show, what do we want to go take a look? Let's go back to those short-term equity future contracts out here, the 30-minute chart. So give me a moment here just to uh, swap screens. And uh, so what you're going to be looking for. So in the case of the NQ, that little pullback, uh, I don't think it actually even had – I don't think the NQ had a TD9 count top. But it, whether it does or it doesn't, there's only two that possibly do, the ES and the Dow. Now, this is bar number nine that is forming at 2 p.m. Between now and 2.30, if price is able to clear, just has to spike above it. On the ES Mini, it's 45.87. Then that will go ahead and generate a TD9 count. It needs to do that by 2.30. Inside the Dow, the spike higher needs to be above 34,674. Now, you prefer to have all four instruments doing something similar to identify some kind of a top. We don't have that, but you do have those two that you would be watching for. Now, you'd want to watch those, and you'd certainly want to watch the bar. If, if you do get above those levels we talked about, then you certainly want to watch the bar following, well, the, the, whatever the high is by 2.30. Uh, if that happens, because if price closes above that high, that tells you about a strong moment to move to the upside. The ES Mini would then go target 46.34. The Dow Equity Future Contract would go target 34.902. That would be on a failure of ATD nine count. So that's what I would be watching here intraday during the power trading hour, which could become the polar plunge trading hour uh, inside the ES Mini and the uh, Dow, or it might just simply be a strong moment to move because the other two aren't showing us those topping patterns per se so folks thanks so much for joining us again tomorrow morning we'll be recording the show between eight and nine would love for you to join us if you want me to review some things send me an email early in the morning that means you know like between seven and eight that would be helpful and uh, but if not have a terrific thursday if i don't see you tomorrow have a fantastic weekend and we'll see you again on uh, monday thanks for being here folks take care <laughs>